Hello, welcome to the Prairie Renaissance Cultural Alliance. And we have exciting news. We have Nancy Valentine here with us tonight. She is going to talk about her work in half Chinese, all American, uh, her new exhibit here at the PRCA. And she is from the Fergus Falls area and she does paintings and she does uh, watercolors and likes to experiment with bright colors and um, also go into her, her heritage a bit. And I will let her speak more about that. And without further ado, I am introducing you to Nancy Valentine. Welcome, Nancy. Thanks, Lori. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Nancy Xiaorong Valentine, and I'm an artist from Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, I was born and raised in Fergus Falls, but it wasn't your typical story. Uh, you see, I was born in the 90s and in that time, China had the one child policy and my mother is Chinese and I have an older brother. So when she had conceived me, uh, there was this government, there, there was this government expectation placed on the family that, uh, I should not be here. And so my mother and my family immigrated to Fergus Falls to give me the opportunity of life. And what I've done with my artistry is I've really used that as an exploration of my cultural heritage through the understanding that I was raised in the diaspora. And if you're unfamiliar with the phrase diaspora, it's often used in the context of um, Jews who have been exiled. And so when it comes to the diasporic experience that I'm talking about here is the Asian diaspora, which is Asian folks who do not live or were not raised in um, an Asian country. And so what I'm sharing today with my show, Half Chinese All American, my diasporic diary is really that explorative process. I started off as a watercolor artist because that's what was available to me. I could afford a Crayola watercolor palette I could afford watercolor paper from Walmart, um, but that isn't where I stopped. And the Lake Region Arts Council really saw some potential in that. And they awarded me a career development grant back in said 2017. <laughs> um, and through that, I was able to purchase uh, high grade quality artist materials. And so from there, what I've become known for is my watercolor and Chinese ink paintings on rice paper. But what I wanted to do with this show was go beyond that. Um, I have created a series called The Audacity to be Asian in Rural America, and that's currently traveling across Minnesota. But throughout the pandemic, I've been wanting to explore different materials. And I've been exploring what does it mean to um, choose your creative materials intentionally? So a lot of the paintings that you see in this gallery today were actually created with latex house paint that was recycled from the Ottertail County Household Hazardous Waste Reuse Program. <laughs> Shout out to Nick. <laughs> um, and so that means that folks from the community who had leftover paints, they brought them there to be managed and then they're recycled and given out for free to community members. So as an artist, I've decided to use that latex paint uh, as my source. But what I really wanted to do with this was try to translate some of the strokes and brushworks and techniques and the stylized things that I've become known for in this new medium. So in a little bit, we'll go throughout the gallery to kind of share that. Um, but I wanted to start here with these pieces. Uh, I started my creative career in 2016 and each year, I have created a self-portrait and it's really tracked my progression as an artist and my expansion of materials used as well as my understanding of my own identity. What I'm most proud of when it comes to the evolution of these self-portraits is that it goes beyond boundaries. There are some pieces that are more, um, how do I say, fantastical, or I even have a monkey in there, which 
uh, pays homage to me being born in the year of the monkey. I think that's all I want to share about the show in this moment, but if you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer. Anyone online has any questions, feel free to write them in the chat and we will get those to Nancy. Nancy, can you tell us a little bit about boundaries? Because um, this is um, quite obviously a self-portrait of you. You had a poster. Um, there's a, a variety of inks and, and paints in it. Can you tell us a little bit that, about this and the frame and, and the story with it? Absolutely. So Boundaries was a self-portrait that I created actually this past summer. And it came after, um, after a career shift. I decided to pursue my artistry full time, but I was wrestling between my cultural understanding and my experience um, through therapy. I am an avid therapy goer. I've had a therapist for many years and that's really helped me to process through some trauma, build some self-confidence and really um, become more aware of of the person that I am and the things that I wanna say in this life. And so when I created Boundaries, I was wrestling between being an American and living in an individualistic society and coming from a Chinese family, which is a co collectivist society. And so Boundaries are something that are really nuanced and complex and difficult to establish with my family, with my friends, and even with myself. And so when I created this portrait, it was in the midst of reinforcing a boundary. And it resulted in me being really emotionally distressed and very vulnerable. And so through that, I wanted to show that. I wanted to archive that moment in time because I knew that it was going to be influential on who I evolved into as a person and as an artist. Um, and in my understanding of, of how boundaries can be healthy for showing you how, um, how you want people and other people, other people and other experiences to take place around you. Um, one of our participants wants to know what kind of ink you use. Oh, um, that's great. Well, I use Chinese ink <laughs> or known as Sumi, but I source mine from, um, there is this company called Blue Heron Arts and it's uh, run by this man named Henry Lee. And so he, he gets a lot of these materials from China and then brings them to, I believe, California and then makes them available to us American artists for a pretty, Good rate. <laughs> then I have another question for you. Um, can you speak to how this body of work relates to, if at all, your Audacity series? How do you see them working together for your broader artistic goals? Absolutely. So some of the first pieces that I created after the Audacity series was finished was actually um, these works over here. So this is a mini series called New Medium Who Dis? <laughs> and it is in reference to New Phone Who Dis? <laughs> Very um, pop culture. But my, essentially, when I started creating these pieces, I wanted to invest time with my work. When it comes to my paintings of watercolor and Chinese ink on rice paper, the concept comes to me very quickly. And when it comes to execution, it only takes me about 15 minutes to actually create one of those paintings. Much of it is due to the fact that my brushwork is inspired by Chinese calligraphy. And with that, you have very fluid, confident movements. And if you hesitate at all, you can see it reflected in the line that is on the paper. <laughs> so with these ones, I was exploring, well, my understanding of my biracial experience. Um, my friend and fellow artist, Candice Curl Falcone had connected me with uh, this group called Hyphenated Artists Club. 
run by an artist in Seattle named Gina Arico. And Gina is a half, Jap or half Japanese artist um, who came to the US in utero, just like I did. And when I became a part of that group, I started to realize that though I grew up in a rural, predominantly white community, there are people out there in the world that are like me and I have access to them through the internet. And so diving into the virtual realm, I started to be exposed to much more Asian art, a lot of Asian creators and hearing their stories that resonated with me. And so through that, um, I kind of uh, had this understanding of my previous works were very bold in line work and minimal in color. And there's this phrase out there um, where it goes, if I'm too much, go find less. And through a, a shift of career and shift of life and um, using new mediums, there's a lot to unpack. And so I spent a lot of time on these paintings and I kept working them and working them and working them. And it helped me to understand how layers work. It helped me to understand how when uh, how I can overwork something and then hate it and then bring it back. And so each of these works is much more, um, how do I say, connected to my spirit rather than my culture. Um, my Audacity series was all about my family's immigration story, but this is more about me and who I am and the intersections that I represent as a person. Nancy, could you talk a little bit about um, the the small paintings over here on this on this wall? Yeah, absolutely. So what you see here are some mini paintings that I had created. Um, I am a self-taught artist, and what that means is I don't always know what the rules are. <laughs> Uh, but one thing I do know is that to save money, oftentimes artists will create small versions of large paintings to give them an understanding of portion and how it'll translate to the canvas. And so that was what I had done with these six, was I had created these smaller versions to really test out these techniques. And then I fell in love with them. <laughs> um, so then I decided to keep them in the show. And some of my favorites, which are kind of funny are these two spoons and I titled one of them have you eaten yet and the other one are you hungry because those are other ways of saying I love you um, I remember every time I would go to my grandma's house she'd be making some type of amazing dish like dumplings or soup or something and the first question is always have you eaten yet and that felt really it felt like something that I thought others in this Midwestern region could relate to because the first thing that happens when you go into your aunt's place or your grandma's place is they hand you cookies and they ask you if you've eaten. So um, this is my way of sharing a little bit of my culture through a different utensil, um, but the same sentiment. Yes, we've all heard the food is love thing. Right? Like, <laughs> I, I must feed you, right? So that's that's that shows that I love you. <laughs> yeah. How about the fan series here, Nancy? Yeah. So I I decided to um, create these ones mostly because this was an experimentation in how can I translate some of my watercolor techniques to this new medium. And when I was thinking about um, when I was thinking about colors and choice, uh, it was inspired by some real ch silk Chinese fans that I had seen my aunt in Beijing dance with with her her dance troupe back in. I think my last visit to China was in 2014, and so it's kind of it, it was a. I just wanted to paint that because I love my aunt, but also um, because they meant something to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Nancy, um, what 
have you had a chance to talk with your relatives in China about your artwork and um, about your experience and how um, maybe they continue to inform your work, right? As you stay connected with your Minnesota family and your Chinese family and, and, and family in general about, you know, I think one of the beautiful things about um, having so many virtual offerings now is is that connectedness that we can have. Um, so in China, there's this thing called WeChat, or internationally, I think it's known, and it's basically their Facebook. And so I'm able to connect with some of my family that way. Um, but the the language barrier is pretty huge. I was raised in a household where um, my my uh, mother did not teach us Mandarin growing up. And I don't believe that was her decision. And then by the time uh, she wanted to teach us, we were pretty integrated into um, the American school system. And so it was just difficult to get a, a little girl with ADHD to pay attention in Mandarin lessons. <laughs> uh, so, but I will say something that's really beautiful about that is also the relationship that I need to maintain with my mother. Um, there's a softness and a compassion there as we grow and start to understand different perspectives. And I really started to understand the ways in which my mom hasn't just been a bridge, but a true portal for me to this other, this half of me that, um, that is much more rare for me to be immersed in. Yeah. Thanks for question. Um, one of our participants would like you to talk more about the symbolism in the paintings on that wall, particularly the tigers. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this piece is titled Untamed. Uh, and part of it is, <laughs> well, it was me coming into embracing my authentic self. Um, you know, when I had said the phrase earlier, if I'm too much, go find less. Um, I was somebody who had grown up thinking that I was, I was too much, that my personality was too bold or um, that I had, was too high energy or too much of an emotional person. Um, and the tiger for me has always been a symbol of, um, of my mother, actually, you know, there's this stereotype out there called the tiger mom. And essentially what that means is you have this really ferocious, like hyper protective mother, um, much like a tiger <laughs> who is very, very protective of their cubs. And I didn't ever embrace that. I was really resistant to that. And so with Untamed, it was me embracing that and the chaos, <laughs> all of it around it, um, and standing firm in that too. So I use the tiger a lot in my work, um, especially this past year, but that's been a new thing. That was, I think that came to me in June of this year. And how about the yin and yang? Yeah, so this is a very special painting. Um, this is about me and my brother. Um, we've always seen ourselves as light and dark, yin and yang ballads. Um, and so it, it made me, this was created in honor of my brother just understanding the ways in which our lives are always going to be intertwined. This next painting is called uh, The Jade Rabbit and the Moon Goddess. Um, and it's kind of fun because you can't really see the moon goddess unless you get right up in there. Um, and essentially, I had been researching um, <laughs> some old Chinese folk tales uh, and, and stories that I had never been exposed to throughout my upbringing or um, once that 
you know, maybe every kid in China is familiar with because it's told through school and life and all that. But um, I was really fascinated by this character. Um, I believe her name is Chongye. <laughs> and she's the moon goddess. Um, and she has uh, a jade rabbit that lives on the moon. And so I don't know the full story and can't iterate it, but I was really inspired by that. And this one actually um, is kind of wrapped around the understanding or my exploration of queerness. Um, I have a, a, a friend who had really shared uh, her understanding and exploration of stepping into the queer community um, over the last five years. And, and so for me and my experience, this painting was um, representative of that exploration. And then this last one of that series is called Prosperity. Um, and I know that there's all these little symbols in there, uh, but I will say that those came out intuitively. Um, and what I mean by that is I was creating and painting and when that layer came, that was the shape that had come to mind. Uh, and when I talk about these paintings being very spiritual, um, they were paintings that I would be listening to very traditional music and getting into this flow state and it, that would just come out of me. And so I don't necessarily know what those symbols represent in the real world, <laughs> but for me and from me, I have the understanding that they probably come from different experiences in my life. I know when I was younger, there was this restaurant in Fergus Falls called Thomas Cow, and it was very well known. And they had iconic, um, dishes and bowls that had this red ring around them um, and these different patterns. And so I'm not saying that's where this did come from, but that's coming to mind. And so I'm thinking that's where a lot of these little symbols that I had put in there um, almost obsessively um, to, to represent kind of uh, I often tell people that my understanding of the Chinese culture is not factually accurate because I didn't grow up there and there's not a ton of, um, I wasn't a around a ton of resources that could be these pillars of truth. And so when I would walk into thrift stores or garage sales or any space really, and I saw an object that looked Asian, uh, I assumed it was Chinese. <laughs> And it really wasn't until my adult life that I understood like how deeply this affected me. Um, because a lot of folks um, will see my biracialness and see that as ambiguous uh, and make assumptions or ask questions. Um, and that's fine, but I really wanted to understand uh, where, where my roots were. Um, and so this painting here is called Kokeshi doll. Um, and I just want to share that a Kokeshi doll is actually a Japanese uh, wooden toy for children. And I had one in my collection of Asian objects <laughs> for quite a few years. And it wasn't until the summer when I participated in that hyphenated artist club, um, when the artist Gina Arico had mentioned, oh, that's a Kokeshi doll. I grew up with it. And then it gave me the origin of the artifact. And then it helped me to better understand uh, and better see uh, how that had influenced my construct of my understanding of my culture. So this is really paying honor to the nuances and the differences within and around and that make up um, Asia and the Asian experience and Asian peoples. Nancy, could you talk a little bit about um, the different colors that you used in this set over here of work? You've got more earthy tones here, and then these are very bright and vibrant. Is there 
uh, the theory behind your choices <laughs> for, for these works or a different era maybe that you were were working in? Yeah, I think I think the pandemic just reminded me that I I want to live in color. <laughs> um, and these pieces, you know, it's a, it's a jewelry box and a dragon and a fan. And they're very emotive pieces and they're very vibrant and they're meant to be very celebratory. Um, when I think of when I think of these colors and when I think of these objects in my collection, they bring me joy. And so I wanted to reflect that. Um, when it comes to the dragon, purple tends to be a, a very majestic and ethereal color, um, kind of this in between. And I actually use that because uh, in my Audacity series in the dragon, um, I had used the colors pink and blue intentionally to represent the heavens and the earth or the heavens and the sea before you. Um, and so this is that ethereal in between plane. Are there any other questions from the folks online? What about the symbolism of the persimmons? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that, that is distinct from my childhood um, are the fruits that my mom exposed me to on our annual trips to China. You know, every summer from the age of five to 15, my mom would save up all year and we would go for six weeks to China, to her hometown of Lanzhou in the province of Gansu. And when we were there, we would go to these markets. Um, they had street markets for food and fruit and everything. And iconic for me <laughs> is the persimmon. Um, and something that is really, really sweet about it is um, I didn't know that people in the U.S. had access to persimmons. I didn't know <laughs> people knew about it. So I would bring them into school for show and tell. <laughs> and I just, it, it just is like this charming little memory. Um, but the persimmon series was also created uh, in honor of my brother because uh, my mom would always get one for him and one for me. What will you be working on next? Oh, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> so I just finished, um, I just finished five paintings that expand that Audacity series. Um, so I'd originally had the 12 animals of the Chinese Zodiac, and then I decided to incorporate the, the elements that, um, that interact with that. And so that's wood, earth, water, fire, and metal. Um, so those pieces I would like to also mount to silk brocade to turn them into true wall scrolls. Um, but in this moment, I am shifting my focus to more writing um, and also uh, working on community projects. So I have, there's one that I was about to say that I can't talk about yet, <laughs> um, but when it comes to writing, um, I just want to mention and, and pay gratitude to the Minnesota State Arts Board because um, I received um, uh, I received some support from them. I'll add the the actual grant name in the comments, <laughs> but uh, I received support from them to write the artist statements for that series, um, and that that's going to take a lot of mental and emotional labor. And so I'm going to be painting as a source of uh, joy rather than exploration. Um, and so with that, there's quite a few uh, painting gifts that I owe some friends. So over the next couple of months, my focus is gonna be um, creating those pieces for those friends. And hopefully uh, by the end of summer, having um, an anthology of artist statements that will be available online. So there's another question asking how this show came about. Oh, yeah. So I had met Lori. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, this, uh, we met years ago, actually. Um, I was facilitating a workshop for Springboard for the Arts uh, as a, an employee at the time. And you were an artist in the Lake Region Arts Council Artist Cohort. Um, actually, I was doing the work of art series oh. that Naomi was, um, Naomi Schlesen was teaching down in Morris. So she had traveled down from the Burgess area and teach it at the Morris Public Library. Um, and then I attended all the sessions and then she had prompted us to come to some of the panels that Springboard had um, in Burgess. And so I was attending some of those. And so we got to know one another a little bit and um, through, I guess, my role here at the PRCA on the exhibits committee, invited you to have a show in this space. So. Yeah, and I also just want to take a moment of, and, and shed some light on this. You know, I've talked a little bit about therapy and about mental health, and I was supposed to have a show here last year. Um, and I actually reached out to Lori because I was going through a difficult time and had to cancel it. Uh, and graciously, uh, this year, came around and Lori kept the invitation open. And so I owe you my gratitude for that because that is a, a that is deep compassion. Uh, and so I was, I feel supported by that. Thank you. Good, well, we absolutely, we artists need to stick together and support one another, right? So um, we get it, we get it. Um, yours was not the only hiccup through the COVID. Uh, issue so we we understand that and we appreciate your honesty and <coughs> part of me authenticity through that so we wanted to exhibit your work you're an emerging artist and and your work um, is very personal and um, I think it it suits our space and it's different and and we enjoy bringing something that surprises people right and brings them joy and makes them think about something else. So it's it's good to I'm glad you said yes. So you can come back. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions that anyone has for Nancy? Someone no, but I just want to say thank you so much. <laughs> I heard you. I love you, whoever you are. <laughs> um, I think there was a question That's about where work can be purchased. Um, so originals right now, uh, I have this exhibition, which these pieces are available through this gallery. And I do ask that you contact PRCA um, for inquiries about these works. Um, I also have work at the McCrosty Art Ooh. <laughs> the McCrosty in Grand Rapids, uh, Minnesota, and there are those elemental works that I had shared about earlier are available for purchase. Um, I will be posting uh, the paintings that I had in my show at the New York Mills Regional Cultural Center online. Um, those will be posted on my website in hopefully the next month. <laughs> um, but if you're interested in prints, I do have an Etsy shop. And so if you go to my website, uh, you can peruse through there. I'm hoping to, I keep saying hoping, but we're multifaceted individuals. <laughs> and so uh, with my fingers in 10 different pots, uh, I hope to update my print shop. Um, if there's something that you see that you would really love a print of, let me know, uh, because then I can expedite that process rather than keep you hanging. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much to everyone who's joined us online. Um, uh, by all means, stop by our gallery. We are in downtown Morris, Minnesota, the Prairie Renaissance Cultural Alliance. And um, stay um, and thank you very much, Nancy, for for sharing your work with us and um, your personal experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Great job.
Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful.